Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Tyrion 2000. When last we left off, a lot of things have happened. Trent Hawkins has managed to get to Delaney and is now working with GenCore against Microsol. After briefly returning to Savara to save it from a madman and a blimp, he went to Tyrion in the hopes of getting some of that gravitic ore. What he found was a Microsol ambush, which he was able to definitely avoid. Before we end Episode 1 and go to Episode 2, let's look at the specs of this ship. The Gencor Maelstrom is a refined phoenix with an additional 2 centimeters of main hull. It also features the Lux plush seating, with extra wide armrests and synth velour lining. Ooh, luxurious! Standard on the Gencor Solo Fighter line is the new Particle Redefinition technology, which allows you to materialize extra armor on your outer hull. Pilots are warned that the system is easily triggered, and it completely drains your shields. Well noted. Accidentally opened that again? Let us skip Sojin again, no more ale collecting for us, and go to the end of Episode 1. I've tried to get to Episode 2 a few times, but there have been minor issues. Secret Hint 121, Asteroid 2. There is a secret to the first tank in the level. There are loads of secrets. Press a key. Input your high score. Again. I am here on every single point now. One, two, and three. There were other people there. They're gone now. Episode 2, Treachery. Let's look at the two pieces of data that we have, both from Jarvi. We were told by Trance and Locke to go and talk to Jarvi, and here he is, Gencor Security Chief. We've been monitoring some unusual freighter shipments between the derelict planet of Gygus and the capital planet of Torm. Both planets are marked on your navigation screen. Insight into these shipments may give us a clue to the whereabouts of Microsoft's base of operations. First, set course for Torm and investigate. Then return to Delaney to report your findings and to await further instructions. You will be given a Gencor Hawk to fly for this mission and greater weapon clearance priority. Good luck! There's nothing I think that we really want here. Some warnings about Torm. There are dragons there. Yes, dragons. These tree dragons enjoy feeding on metal and beryllium ore of which your ship is built, so once awakened they'll munch you right out of the sky. The best weapon against them is a fire or flame based weapon. Also, beware of space pirates who have made a number of secret bases there and can strike without warning. Their ships are usually camouflaged in shades of green, and can be difficult to spot amongst Torm's thick jungles. That is not true. They're really easy to spot. I'm just gonna double check, uh, we can get the Genko Phoenix right away. If you'd started the game at episode 2, you wouldn't be able to afford it. We can't really upgrade that, it's getting pretty close to maximum power. That is not close to maximum power, that's going to take a lot of upgrades. That is really good, that's as good as it can get, and we don't want anything there or there. The amount of uh, power generation that we have is brilliant, because that means that our shields generate really quickly, even when we're firing. These are the tree dragons, we want to destroy them as much as we can, because they drop quite a lot of uh, points, 500 point gems that we really want. And these ships are really poorly camouflaged. You would not think that uh, they weren't there. They're flying in really obvious patterns, and they're trying to destroy us. Also, data cubes. We want those. The plot is in them. Also, that was me accidentally getting hit by a tree dragon. Look at how low my armor has gone. Hopefully, we can survive this. There's also a power up here. A quite useful one front weapon power up wanted that, because that means that our front weapon is extremely good. We want to spend all of our money really on upgrading our rear weapon, because the uh, micro-guarded bombs are pretty useful later on. Also, make sure you stay back after the uh, bit where you're forced to go forward, because uh, you're going to get hit by those ships if you don't. This episode starts to get a little bit hazy for me, because it's episode one that I remember the most. Afterwards it gets uh, harder, most certainly. And also you need to watch out for uh, all of the sneaky things the game starts throwing at you. It starts throwing a lot of things, like this area here, where you have to be very careful in avoiding everything, including that uh, tree dragon. We're not doing badly, we haven't gained an opportunity to get more armor, we could get more armor by draining our shields. Kind of self-defeating, because there really aren't that many opportunities in the uh, game at all for you to not fire and uh, recuperate your shield safely from zero. You 
pretty much need to always be firing. It's like, hey, you're not firing? What's wrong? Have you run out of power? Pretty much the only reason you wouldn't fire. This music's quite good, still not as good as the uh, Asteroid Section 2 music that you don't hear often enough, which is a shame for me. Also, here come some more dragons! Goodbye, dragon. Goodbye, ships as well. There's going to be something sneaky here. Oh look, it's that ship from Savara. Guess what? It's not the boss. Make sure you don't let it run into you. And don't hit those bits either. The game due to you there. It didn't say at the bottom that a large enemy was approaching. That's when you know a boss is coming. Let's grab this here and that there. We want to get all of the points that we can muster. And we also want to get rid of that. These space pirates are certainly numerous, but we're not seeing very much evidence of Microsol here. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's very well hidden? Maybe there is no Microsol presence here. Here's the boss, a boss we're going to see a number of times. This bow. This bow is difficult because uh, the ship moves a lot, and those uh, sonic waves are dangerous. Fortunately, we are very well equipped, and we have really good shields. Level complete. Brilliant. And of course, 61% destruction, we got cubes. Let's read those cubes. This one is from Dugan. Well, 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 looks like you've gotten yourself into too much trouble, as usual. Torm is no place to be investigating for Microsoft shipments. Perhaps the reason you've been tracked this far is because there was a homing device planted on your ship's undercarriage. Pretty high signal one, too. Don't worry, I've removed it. But whoever has been sending you on these missions sounds like they have no idea what's going on. Microsoft's activities are centered around Savara, the Stargate. I say you've been sent on a wild goose chase. Have a word with that uh, Javi Onukala you mentioned. Ask for answers. Oh, I will. Speaking of Javi, here's Javi. I see you have investigated Torm without success. There has to be something there. A homing device? Uh, I know nothing about that. But I will run an investigation. We can't have people trying to murder our agents. Now, I have been receiving reports from the x sector that something unusual is going on there. Your next mission will be to fly there and investigate. Please select anything you like from our supply stocks, and uh, don't worry about that Stargate and Savara. That's not important for anything. It's probably important, but I'm not leading you there. We were on this mission of rebels from the Mendivian Sea sector, near x -Macane. These are human pirates who are aiding the Hazudra forces there, led by a faction leader named Reed. Be careful in there or they'll destroy you, thinking you are a Microsoft scout. Microsoft is attempting to gain control of the Hazudra territory there, thus the rebel forces, but they will make no exceptions when it comes to an intruder. Well noted, I'm starting to doubt if the stuff you're telling me is actually true or not. We can upgrade this, uh, one more time. We will at some point. Can we upgrade this? We don't have enough money. Can't upgrade that. Won't upgrade anything there because it's all downgrades, and there's really nothing here but I want to get. There is the Minto ship. I don't want the Minto ship. So, let us save, and then we will move on to a pretty difficult level. This level is really challenging. There's a good chance that I will die here, most likely at the boss. Here is Gygus. Now, Gygus, right at the beginning, has a upgrade thing, a rear weapon upgrade. You could avoid that if you are not uh, being observant. Being able to upgrade the rear weapon is really important here. Also, preserving your armor is extremely important here, because your armor is going to be really useful at the very end. I mean, we already have ridiculous amounts of armor and shields. The shields are a lot better than they normally would be, but... It's not really going to be enough. Not even this amount of uh, shielding is going to be enough. And yes, I'm just holding down the fire button here, because uh, there's no reason not to. I'm generating more than enough power. This will change later, when I'll have to more uh, carefully balance my damage output, and that was really foolish. But I think I got away with it. Maybe. Don't want to let these run into me. Yeah, I think I got away with that. Only just, though. Okay, this is going to be a tricky part, because here is where lots and lots of enemies will surround me. And, oh dear! Afterburners activated! I didn't activate those afterburners. Something happened.
open there, and right into where one of those uh, swinging claw things is. Also, this level's full of aliens. We don't get many levels full of aliens, but this one is full of them. Why were we sent here? Why would Microsol care about here? I get the feeling Jarvie might not have my best interests at heart. I just got that hunch that something's going on here. I'm sure it's nothing. I've grabbed some data, though. I'm sure Jarvie will want to talk to me later. Mainly, what, you didn't find anything? Well, here's a black hole you can go and investigate, Trent. I'm sure nothing bad will happen there. This is the point where, if you're not careful, you can lose a lot of, uh, a lot of armor. But I was very fortunate, and I think I've actually lost none. I'd rather dodge all of that than try to uh, take on those foes. Because there were a lot of things firing at me from other locations, and dodging there was key. The boss is coming up pretty soon, I'm sure. This boss is quite challenging. Where is this boss? Here's the boss! If you thought it was going to be a giant alien monster thing, it's a giant alien monster thing. It's going to constantly fire these weird orbs at you. You've got to be very quick at destroying it. I'm very glad that I destroyed that uh, boss quickly. Otherwise, those arm things would go into the middle and likely crush you. Let's see about this data, shall we? We have question mark, question mark, question mark, and Jarvi. Your life is forfeit, human. We know of your plans to sweep Materian Sector and destroy your life. We are going to attack your fleet and obliterate your merciless ships until you are no longer a threat to us. Your only hope of escape is to call off the attack now. I will enjoy your destruction. I wonder if that was actually aimed at us. Hello, Jarvi. We've been notified of a course change. You must immediately head for the Mendivian Sea Sector and the home city of the rebel forces there. Obliterate them and return to us. They are threatening to overtake the sector. Be careful, Trent. You'll need all the firepower you can get. Why am I doing this exactly? You're not going to tell me, are you? No, you are not. We're just blindly following your instructions. Also, maximum power front weapon. It's ridiculously wide in the radius, and that is good. Also, we're going to have to save up a lot of money to uh, upgrade that. Can't upgrade this, can't upgrade that. Could get the Zika Flamethrower. The Zika Flamethrower is a nice thing, but we'll get other opportunities to grab that. It does consume a ridiculous amount of power. Let us save right here, and move on to the next level, where we have been diverted for some reason to a bonus level! It's not as uh, triumphant in its music, but that's fine, because we have more bonus things that we can get. More cool prizes! More points that we can use to uh, upgrade things further. Look at how wide our firing radius is. There are going to be more things for us to get here, like these. We'll just a bonus this up, grab all of these gems. Excellent. More points, more upgrades. Maybe. I'd like to get a better ship at some point. And anything here? There should be... Yep, one more! There we go. Let's destroy that. That's that there. And that here. There may be... Nope! No more! Bonus done! We destroyed 99% of everything there. Good. Anything we can get here? The answer is... Nothing super awesome. Nothing awesome there. No new ship types that we really want. The shields are fine. The generator is fine. The companion ship Warfly is available, but I don't want that, and I don't want anything there either. Always worth checking, because even after the bonus levels, what you can get changes. Okay, let us now go to the Asteroid City. Good luck indeed, as we attack everything here! We're also getting bombs, for some reason. We've been told by Jarvi that there is a threat here, and without questioning it, we're just going. This is probably going to be a bad, bad decision, because Jarvi has been anything but trustworthy. But we are working with Gencore, and surely Trans and Locke wouldn't have somebody uh, in Gencore who'd be working against the best interests of Gencore, right? Okay, there's a high chance of that. Who wants to bet this is going to end poorly for us? Everything so far has been ending poorly for us, to be fair. There's not a lot in terms of uh, enemies here. There are lots of bombs that we can use, though. We right-click to find the bombs, and they make a huge explosion. We're not actually going to use them yet. We may save them for later, though. 
This level's not that dangerous just yet, although they are giving us absolutely loads of bombs. Are there any secret levels here? There may be. I can't guarantee I'll find them, though. This is the point of the game where my knowledge of the secret levels and everything else sort of flies out the window. But that's okay, as you can see, we have awesome amounts of destructive might at our disposal. And we are just destroying everything that we encounter. Absolutely everything. The only way this level could be better is if it was the Asteroid uh, Section 2 music. But we don't have that. We have this music, which is fine. All of the music in this game is pretty good. More bombs? More bombs. I really don't think we can actually carry any more bombs. I think we are at maximum bomb capacity here. There's another foe. We're getting lots of points, if nothing else. We're slowly saving up for upgrades for our various things. Okay, they're firing a lot of things at us now. I think they're a little annoyed that we're here. I wonder why. Maybe because I'm blowing up absolutely everything that I encounter. It's probably that. Okay. More things to shoot, more things to destroy. Is the plot going to get sillier? Oh my, is it going to get sillier? We just haven't got the... Ooh, secret level. Oh, oh, that hurt. I'll grab that secret level thing. That's how powerful the uh, plasma thing... Oh, that was not good. That was a fair amount of armor that I lost. I hope I do not get destroyed at this late point in the level. It could happen. I could lose. After all, I am only one fighter pilot. I do have lots of bombs, though. That one turret that I missed will get to live. Are we at the end now? I think we're at the end. Close to it anyway. Get those there. Get the things at the back first, because they're the ones that are causing all of the uh, havoc there. Level. level complete. Warping to secret level. We have no data here, but we do have things that we can get. Like the Super Carrot if we wanted to. Uh, we cannot afford the Super Carrot. We can, however, afford the Micro Core Stalker B. Definitely getting that. Nothing here that we want. Nothing here that we want. Shields are the same. Ooh, the Gravitron Pulse Wave. It's actually worth downgrading our weaponry by one so that we can get that. Okay, we'd have to downgrade it by quite a bit. By two. If we downgrade it by two, we can get this amazing generator. It's worth doing. It's definitely worth doing. We are weaker because of it, but we also have a much better vessel. Let's check the specs. Microsoft continues the Stalker line with the Stalker B. This is the deluxe model preferred by Microsoft's own outer scouts. It's the ship of choice for those long solo flights. The Stalker B adds an additional two structural units with its refined alloys for an unheard of 28 SUs in a solo craft. It's pretty good. Let us uh, save the game and see what this bonus level provides for us. Hopefully lots of ways to recuperate our money. Unknown. Mistakes have been made, but we are in a fantastic vessel. A really good vessel. Also, look at all the firepower that is being thrown at us. We're actually weaker when it comes to uh, what we can throw out, but we have a brilliant generator. I think it might be the best generator in the game. Also, these are enemies that we're not going to encounter really until episode 3. So they're hidden away in this uh, secret level. Oh yes, this is definitely a, uh, a thing we're not really going to be encountering until episode 3. But it's a good opportunity to get some more money, because we need to recoup all that we just spent. It was a good upgrade. Oh, that's going to bounce up and down. We could blow up the uh, things that are doing the bouncing. It's probably a good idea, but they don't always hang around. And there are space drills. I have no idea what they're trying to drill. Maybe they're trying to drill the point home that we're in trouble. Oh, that's probably what they're doing. Getting that really expensive generator will help out later when I get a weapon that I really, really want. Also, look at all this firepower that's being aimed at us. Also, do not get hit by that bouncing ball. Getting hit by that bouncing ball is a terrible idea. Just got to be careful here. Very careful. There are lots of things here that may actually be causing a tiny bit of slowdown. But that's okay, because we're done. Mistakes were made, because here is Reed. I'm Reed, head of the Rebel, Mendivian, and Anti-Microsoft League. We do not know why you've attacked. 
I would like an explanation. Explains, explains, explains. What? We are not the ones planning an attack against the Sector for Total Domination. It's Microsoft, stationed in Savara and ready to launch within the next 10 days. You've been tricked. Apparently you were deceived by Jarvi, who is a Hazudra traitor. He was stolen at birth and placed under a holographic mind control by Microsol. The most we have been able to uncover about him is that he is apparently an infiltrator into the Jenkor Alliance. You must return to Delaney and stop him. He's probably the means for Microsol to overthrow Jenkor. Quickly, restock your ship and head for Delaney before Jarvi has another chance to signal Microsol for the start of the attack. You may be able to reach them before they form a strategic defense. We have been deceived by the most contrived thing possible. The fact that holographic manipulation of the mind affected Jarvi from birth. Suffice to say, we could get a microcore stalker. But we have the stalker B, which is slightly better. Worth getting. We could start working towards upgrading our uh, various things again. We need to. We'll want that uh, front upgrade as soon as possible. We can't get a better shield. Not for a long time. And I doubt we're going to get a better uh, generator either. We could get the buster rockets. We're not going to spend any money on any of them. We need to save for getting back what we have uh, lost in getting that generator. And when we come back, folks, we have indeed been misled by Jarvi. And we will go to Sojin again for some reason. Who knows why? Maybe for the bonus level. Maybe because there's something there that we need. But either way, when we come back, we'll go there. And maybe we'll confront Jarvi. Or maybe something will go horribly wrong for us. It's more likely that's going to happen. Such is the way that things go for Trent Hawkins. And so... I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. Will we ever get Pew Pews on our ship? Oh my, we might. And when we do, it will be amazing. We already have a ridiculous amount of firepower. How much more ridiculous can it get? So much more ridiculous. Oh, trust me. So much more. Later. <laughs>